Hello and welcome. Today we have an old friend on our desk again. This is a B550 Plus Prime. This board, if you remember, had physical damage around the SIO and we tried to fix the board by using the 555 timer in a circuit to fix it. So this had the problem that PCIe reset was stuck on it and um, the power OK signal took too much current. That means that um, it was gaining high, but not high enough. And what we did is because it needed specific timing is we built up a 555 timer circuit in order for it to give out 3.3 volts into the power OK signal a few seconds after the board started up. And this was the schematic that we used. As you can see, this is the 555 timer circuit. This is a NPN or this is an N-channel MOSFET that takes the three volts and supplies it to the SIO as soon as the signal comes out of the 555 timer as an output on its gate. So we basically just switch 3.3 volts to the SIO into the pin that we need after some time determined by the resistor value and by the capacitor value that we have on the 555 timer circuit. And the other thing was that this looked absolutely janky. We're going to go under the microscope and I'm going to show you how janky it looked. And as you can see now, this is the close up of what we have. So we have uh, our SIO right here. And on the SIO, I glued the 505 timer. We have a connection from there to there going. We have a connection from there to there. We have the capacitor that is just laying on here connected to these two pins. This is what you can see here flying in the air. This is a resistor that is soldered on there actually. And under that, you can see a SOT23 component right there, which is a diode, which connects this pin to this pin by a diode. The other things that you can see is we have one wire going from this pin. This is the output of the 555 timer to the gate of this component right there. Then you have another wire. This one, this is five volts coming from here. This is the supply voltage. You have another wire, which is this one. This is the output of the of the end channel MOSFET that goes there. And the fourth wire that you have is ground that you took from here going to there. So this board is working and this is fully functional as you can see here. But this looks awful and could never be sold to anyone. The other thing is that it is quite high and that the, uh, you would have problems plugging in a PCIe card often very uh, close to here. And also it looks very janky and there's only these flimsy wires and a little bit of hot glue that you can see here. So I was very happy when I got approached by Today's video sponsor and my very first sponsor on this uh, on this page who sponsored this video is PCBWay and they helped me to make this beautiful board right here. And not only single one but multiple of these. So let's see what these boards do. So this board takes all of what we have here and puts it on this neat little design. So what you have is, you have the 555 timer right here. You have the N-channel MOSFET going here. You have one resistor going here, 0603. You have the capacitor going in here, with this being minus marked. And you have the SOT23 diode right here. I use this diode because I do not have any SMD diodes. I only have this one that has a junction from here to there and from there to there and that I use as a uh, diode. The other thing that you can see is um, that all of the inputs and outputs are labeled except the output. We have five volt here, we have three volt in coming here and we have ground there because our ground gets connected right there. Our five volts goes from this wire goes up and our three volts comes from there so that we have everything on this board. This is a two layer board. As you can see here, we have some wires down here. And yeah, I tried to populate this board for the very first time and I made a big mistake mis um, designing this board. I will go over that a little bit later, but 
let me show you what I had to do to make this work in the first place. So this is my very first attempt to populate the board and my problem with what I did was I had the wrong footprint on the board. I had the footprint for SMD 555 timer and I only had through hole 555 timers. So what did I try? I tried to make yet another floating one by soldering wires to the pads and then also to the legs. And populating the other stuff, as you can see, there's the end channel MOSFET. You have the resistor in there between and I used the wrong resistor as well. As you can see, there's two resistors floating there. There's the diode and there's the capacitor in there. And this was my very first try and this didn't work. This failed miserably. And then I have to switch to our overhead cam. And after that, I tried version two of this. And as you can see, this is like a spider. <laughs> this is the 555 timer that you can see right there. And this is the board. Um, let's go under the microscope and look at this. This being our board. As you can see, a lot of flux still here, a lot of enameled wire that I soldered onto here. There's the resistor in between there, the 302, and there's also the diode, this time the capacitor on the other side of the board, and the output wires, and the long wires to the spider-like 555 timer. The interesting thing is, this timer actually works. This circuit works like it is. So this was my proof of concept for it to work that my PCB design was right. And after that, I then went to our final iteration, which is this one. This time we have a 555 timer that is SMD. We have the end channel MOSFET. We have the resistor. We have the diode over there. We have our capacitor in here. And this is the finished circuit. We have the three volt input there, five volt input there and ground there. And that is our output. And this now got really good, I, I gotta say. This would be way cleaner to put this on flat onto the SIO and just solder those four wires and have it on there instead of having this mess on here especially with the end channel MOSFET that is down there. So this was my, this is my very first own PCB design. I've never designed a PCB before and I want to show you what software I used and what I did to, to make this and what I would improve on for the next time. So let's switch over to the PC. And right now we are in DipTrace. This is a free software for personal use. And this is what I used for my very first design of the PCB. So I want to run you through this. So the purple lines that you can see are the outline of the PCB. And then let's start from the inputs. We have our three volt input. We have our five volt input and ground marked here as you can see. And the star of the show is this chip in the middle right here. This is our 555 timer. So as you can see, the 555 timer is a SMD layout right here. And what I had was a dip eight. So this is how big it should have been. And as you can see how small the SMD footprint is. So this was one of the first mistakes that I did. I only had through hole components and I populated an SMD one. But there wasn't a problem. I could order another one after that. So after ordering I had an SMD footprint one and that wasn't a problem anymore. The next thing that I did, the mistake that I did is this capacitor. This capacitor has to be 820 microfarads. Um, like I did it and the problem is 820 microfarads is always a through hole uh, uh, capacitor. What I would change for the next time is to change my values of the resistor that we have here and the capacitor so that I get the same time but I can use um, SMD tantalum capacitors or just any SMD 
capacitors so that I would have a smaller footprint. This is the second mistake that I did. So, so the third mistake would be to theoretically a different resistor than I ha had here. Instead of the 3K one, I would have one that is adjusted. So we would have a different capacitor and still have the same time. And I would maybe do a 1206 instead of a 0603. I have no problem with soldering 0603 or even 0402, but 1206 would be just easier to solder onto here. The next thing I would change is to have a small diode here. Instead of this big SOT23 diode, I would want a small diode that is just SMD that connects from there to there, but I do didn't have the components on hand. And the other thing that you could have done then is also to get it closer to save some space on the PCB and make it even smaller and shift all these things around. The next thing is that I didn't learn how to make PCB markings yet. I need to learn that because my output is the only thing that is not labeled. There is labels for three volts, five volts and ground that is just from the um, from the software itself, but I didn't found a label for output. So I still need to learn how to get the output on here, right? That this, what you can see here, actually gets printed on the circuit board as well. The next thing that uh, was bad is the markings of the uh, single components. For that we go over to our microscope again. And as you can see, I had the marking for some of the components still enabled. So for this component we have U2, for this component we have marker 1, then we have BAT54 for the diode, we have C2 for the capacitor. For this very small board, this really wasn't necessary. Just as you can see there at the top, there's labels also. These vi uh, white little um, dots that you can see or lines that you can see that were uh, above there were also markings that I didn't remove. So that is another thing that I would change the next time to have a more cleaner PCB. And the other thing is I would want this PCB to be even smaller. I think that this PCB can be can be shaved down to something like this. If I go closer with all the traces and use SMD components, for example, for the capacitor, use smaller uh, components for the, um, for, for the diode that we have here. And one more thing, I would want a better way to connect these wires, but for now this should suffice. So what is now left to do is to take this PCB and actually put it on the board and see if it works. I will need hot air to remove this component because it's glued down and I will also have to remove all of these small wires first. So we are now are uh, mostly cleaned up and what is going to be, we're going to put this here and we will need to connect some wires. This ground wire needs to connect to there. This output wire needs to connect, I think, to that left pad. I need to look that up once more. Then we have our 5 volt, which needs to connect to that side of the resistor. And then we have our 3 volts which needs to connect to this pad right there. So I will now proceed to do that. And right now we are using some glue stick. I'm going to heat a little bit of the glue stick up and we're going to be putting a little bit on the back of the board of glue stick so that it holds onto the SIO. And let's plunk it down right here. So it sits nice and flat on here and is plain with the edge that we have there.
And here we are with our final iteration of this board. We have the three volts connected right there. We have five volts connected right here. Next, we have our output connected to here. We have our ground connected to here. I made sure to have short wires so I wouldn't short on anything, wouldn't touch anything else. And yeah, this is the most important one that the, this is connected to our output. And let's now see if this still boots up and this works. So what we are going to do next is we're going to be placing our probe onto this pin right here. And what we expect is to have an output after a few seconds of starting the board up. So, and now we have everything connected. We have our ground connected there. Let's turn this on, press the power button. As you can see, we have zero volts and it takes a few seconds. And we have three volts on our output. This is what we want to see. And as you can see, we have a post screen right there. So as you were able to see, there was so, a little bit of a delay onto our 3.1 volts on getting our power OK signal. Now let's try this again. This is now turned off as you can see by the fan and we have nothing on the output anymore. Going to turn this on, takes a few seconds and we have output on here. Let's see how this reacts when we reset. And when we're hitting reset, it also works just fine. It seems to be that the output can stay high for a reset. So let's do another reset. Now I've reset the board and the output stays high. And you can see it posting again. So even uh, on a default reset, it still works with this circuit in mind. So we have fixed this board yet again. And now it looks a lot nicer. Like now we have a very small circuit that is left over here. Um, I'm going over to the microscope again. As you can see, the board is running and this is all that is left from the original botch job that we had. This is way cleaner. This looks like almost it is intended. The only thing that doesn't look as clean right now are the wires that are connecting to the single points that we need. But still, I am very, very happy with this result. And I gotta say, designing circuit boards is a lot of fun. Like this was the very first time that I uh, designed a circuit board and doing it was a lot of fun. I don't know if you ever designed as, um, something like for a 3D printer, but that was what it reminded me of. Um, designing your own very own first circuit, making design decisions. It was very nice and was a lot of fun. I can recommend the software that I used. Um, it is a free software for private use, DipTrace it's called. So you could, so if you want to start out, maybe try to use that software. And the most important thing I want to say, thank you very much PCBWay for sponsoring this video. They have kindly provided these PCBs that I was able to design and they were very nice in their commun communication with me with sponsoring this channel making able to get more tools for our channel, get more things, get these kind of PCBs and make future projects. So this is uh, definitely not the last time we are going to be designing some circuit boards to fix main boards. And I just can recommend to you try it, try it out for once and um, learn PCB design because this is going to be this is going to lead you in a way where you have to think a lot more about integrated circuits, about how you design something, how something works in rel relation to each other, how something has to be connected to, to each other, where you put vias and where you don't. So this is a great learning experience and I'm very happy to start this journey off with PCB way in designing circuits for yourself and for me for learning a lot more. So. Thank you very much for watching. Thank you very much that you saw a look at this bot job that I did yet again, trying to make it look a little bit more nicer. Hope you learned something. Hope I was able to motivate you, you to do something, to learn something new. This has been Mainbot Medic. Thank you very much and goodbye.